Hey and welcome back. So you're currently joining me in the middle of another project where I've hit a bit of a roadblock. For a bit of context, I'm making a few more of those die holders which I made back in April, but I have made a few changes to make them a bit easier to make. But I've now gotten to the stage where I need to make up all the caps. Now the stock for the caps is 16mm rod, which I've picked up in these 2 meter long units. These are going to be cut in half, so I can then feed them through the spindle bore and then through into the chuck. Now doing this has two big advantages. The first one is you can simply machine the part, part it off, and then all you have to do is pull the stock forward and then you can start machining all over again. And since I'm making quite a few of these one after another, doing it this way is just more efficient. The second advantage is there's just less waste, because as you'd know, as you get to the end of each rod, you do need some stock left over for the chuck to physically hold onto, which then obviously can't be used for machining. The longer the rod means the more parts you can make before you reach the end of the rod. However, I'm sure you can all see the big problem that's going to occur, because the longer the rod, the more unsupported mass is going to be at the back of the lathe, and even with a small tap, it's causing it to wobble like crazy. And if I was to run this at 8 or 900 RPM, which is what I'd normally do, this would get out of hand really quickly. I'm sure most of us have seen that video where the stock wobbling on that lathe causes it to bend, which eventually takes out a chunk of the flooring, a bunch of cabinets, and it causes the lathe itself to physically move. And that is the last thing that I would want to happen in this workshop. Thankfully though, there are some workarounds. One of them would be to get a set of support rollers, which you can then set up behind the spindle to support the stock. You know, I've used these before and they work well, and they might work well here, except for the fact that I have the milling machine, which is in the way. The other fix, which is what I'm going to attempt here, is something called a lathe spider. And that's not to be confused with the spider that lives underneath the lathe. A lathe spindle spider seems to be a sleeve that slides into the back of the spindle, and you essentially lock it in place, and then you use a set of screws to essentially hold the stock in place, or at least make it concentric. It doesn't seem to be too different to a steady rest, except for the fact that it hangs out on the back of the lathe and it attaches to the back of the spindle. I've seen some designs where the sleeves fits on the inside of the spindle bore, but on this lathe, the bore is so small that I couldn't afford it to get any smaller. So at least for my lathe, the sleeve needs to fit on the outside of the spindle. So first things first, let's get the sleeve made up. I have an offcut of some 1045 steel, which should do the job nicely. So I'll get it cleaned up and I'll get a hole drilled all the way through. So the spindle bore on this lathe is 25mm, so I'll use a deming bit to take it to 15 sixteenths of an inch, and then I'll take it to its final size with the boring bar. With that pretty much spot on, I'll counterbore the sleeve to fit on the back of the spindle, leaving about 15mm of overhang for the screws. With the sleeve now made and now fitting on the back of the spindle, I now need to figure out how to clamp it in place. Now the original plan was to use a cap head screw to simply pull a slot closed and I would clamp it onto the spindle. 
You know, it's not my idea and I'm sure it would have worked quite well, but unfortunately the stock wasn't large enough and I really didn't have time to go out and get a larger piece of steel. Now plan B was to simply use a couple of set screws to hold it in place, but I didn't want to mark up the outside of the spindle if I was using grub screws, and whilst I might have been able to use some softer brass bolts, I don't exactly carry a whole bunch of brass on me these days, so that sort of went out the window too. Now the final plan was to simply use some hose clamps to hold everything in place. I've done this sort of method before, and it does seem to work, but unfortunately the pulley spacing meant that there wasn't exactly enough space to fit the hose clamps in the original spacing that I was hoping to. So as a bit of a compromise to allow me to get this project done, I had to bring the clamps a bit forward to clear the pulley. And my fingers were crossed that this was going to work. So the next step was to get it in the dividing head and then I could use a slitting saw to cut in about six slots to allow the sleeve to act sort of like a collet and compress in a bit. I'll then take it over to the lathe and machine in a groove that's wide enough for the clamp. Now this serves to locate it and prevent it from slipping or moving from side to side, but it also reduces the thickness of the metal that it needs to clamp and hopefully give it a fighting chance of clamping and working properly. Finally, I'll get it back in the dividing head and get three holes drilled and then tap for some screws. I think I might have been better off doing four holes to sort of work it like I would a four jaw chuck, but three seems to have worked just fine for me, at least for the moment, but if it doesn't work in the future, I can always add some extra holes. All right, and that's the spider now done. I'll then use a dial indicator to then dial it in. The important thing here is not to do the screws up too tightly since you don't want to mar up the stock. And I also want to be able to pull the stock all the way through to make the next part. And the moment of truth. And I gotta say that looks pretty good. You know, for the amount of stick out that I have here, there is almost no wobble in the part. And I'm running this at about 900 RPM, so if it was going to be an issue, it would have definitely showed up. With that said though, this is probably as far as I'd take it, and if I wanted to make it any longer, I'd probably want some sort of roller support. With all that now done, I can pretty much close up the back and start machining like I normally would. And that's about it for now. Sorry about the unplanned nature of this project, but that's sort of the reality of machining sometimes. You know, this was all done at about 7 or 8 o'clock at night when all the shops were closed and I really had to get something made very quickly with only a small amount of material on hand. So at least to me, this is about as successful as any of the other projects that I've done. It works and it works really well. And with this now done, I should be able to get the rest of the project finished. So until then, thanks for watching, see you next week.